Uh, welcome back guys, uh, Chris. So this is part two of building the Raspberry Pi arcade machine. Now I actually already have it done and uh, let's cut real quick to a clip of that to it working. Alright so this is my wife Janice. Uh, she's showing the working machine. So let's just do real quick here. That's how big it is. <laughs> There's Vanna Black here. All right, so she's gonna choose a game. What'd you choose? Pa Mrs. Pac-Man. Ms. Pac-Man, all right. And I'll get a good zoom in on the control so you can see it working. All right. So she did uh, down and start to insert the coin. And before you get too tied into it, do you want to show them how to pause? Down and... Oh, no. Oh. Right, so up and enter pauses the game in case you're doing a marathon or some kind of competition. And, uh, yep, up and enter, unpauses it. Now to go back to the menu screen, it says left and start button. So, yeah, that's that. Sweetheart, you want to say goodbye to everybody? Bye! <laughs> oh! <laughs> Should have paused. Alright, guys, so you saw that uh, it works. We even have sound. Not sure if you can hear that in the video. I'll have to make sure. Um, it's all right now being powered off of the speakers, and the, the speakers on the Raspberry Pi are being powered off of a rather weak USB hub I ordered off Amazon. My suggestion is, if you're going to go the same route for your build, use a decent USB hub. Don't go with the cheapest, and you know, check it out like in a store if you can, because you're going to want it to provide a bit of power. The Raspberry Pi runs about 700 milliamps and the one the hub that I'm using only does a thousand total which is fine for just the Raspberry Pi but the speakers also use 500 so the speakers are getting underpowered because the Raspberry Pi is taking all of it so the speakers aren't very loud um, not that USB speakers are loud to begin with. Anyway uh, moving on I just wanted to show you guys some of the stuff that I used in this build. Um, I ordered a lot of stuff. Didn't end up using all of it. Uh, some of it got used for just testing. If you are confident in your ability to solder and wire things, you're not going to need a breadboard or you might already have that kind of thing. Anyway, so one of the biggest purchase was this arcade bundle, one joystick, ten buttons, and one of these one player buttons right here. Uh, in my mind, that's not a bad deal for thirty bucks. The joystick is a little large, you saw how big it was there. Worked out fine, but the wiring was cramped. Picture uh, In this picture you can see here, that wiring is super cramped. So we've got the little USB speaker, the Raspberry Pi, and the screen being held in by hot glue. No one can see it, so it's not a big deal. But yeah, that wiring is super cramped in there. Um, and another mistake that I made is I used solid core wiring which means it'll stay wherever you bend it which sounds fine especially when you're soldering it but when you get it in this small confined area it is it is not pretty and um, I actually ran into a problem with this top middle button right here it, it didn't want to work and it was because the wire was getting bent at a funny angle and no longer making contact so just watch out for that tutorial that I'm recording. Hold on. So one of the other resources I used was the Adafruit.com tutorial where they went through this how to do this. As you can see down here, they've just got a two button and a joystick set up. They sell very small buttons and a very small joystick. This joystick would probably be a lot easier to wire up than mine was. If you remember right here, this whole thing right here, that's the joystick. It's got four separate switches that are huge. They're called micro switches, but they're not micro at all. So, yeah. Anyway, uh, the thing that I used from this tutorial, if you go to the adding arcade controls, is they have written a program in C that you can compile on your Raspberry Pi. And I'll be going over that. Um, that translates the button presses on the GPIO 
which uh, you can see here this right here are the GPIO pins where I've directly soldered the wires onto them so here if we zoom in you can see this black one here that's my common ground all the buttons share ground and then all these red ones are the actual button hookups themselves um, so I used their pinout diagram this is a revision 2 board if you have revision 1 you want to find the pinout for that not, sorry not pinout but the GPI O pin layout for that. Uh, I use that and then they have this uh, retro game the script that they have and um, if you follow these instructions you can easily set yours up to do what they do what you want. They've obviously only got uh, two buttons and a joystick set up but uh, and then they've got the rest the rest of these instructions are how to set it up to come on come up at boot and all that so those buttons are acting directly like keyboard input pretty cool moving on let's show you some of the construction alright so I just wanted to show the joystick housing real quick it's a lot bigger than I thought it was gonna be from the website so if you plan on going the same route just be aware of that you can see these four switches on the bottom that are actuated when you move the joystick so whatever way you move the joystick it's going to be the opposite switch that gets hit uh, and then here I'm going to grab one of the buttons real quick now the micro switch it just slides into the bottom and then gets actuated by the button and then the buttons just screw in so you want to do like a 30 millimeter hole for that and that's the one player button that you can see there uh, I'm going to use this box here to make a to make a, a test platform for it. Alright, so as you can see here, this is the beginning of the cardboard mock-up for the control panel. I've got the button mounted and the joystick housing mounted. Uh, I just wanted to get, you know, the spacing for the fingers out right. That's going to be very important. And uh, right there, you can see about how much depth they take up. I ended up using four inches for the beginning depth of my tiny cabinet just because I knew that would give us some room to play in uh, in the end I don't think it was enough room to make it easy to put together but it did work so yep. if I had to do it over again I would have used a smaller joystick like maybe one of the half inch ones that you can find by searching for that or the miniature one on Adafruit it's a little expensive but it probably would have been a lot easier and uh, you can see there that I've got some drawings done out where I'm trying to just figure out the spacing again. Alright, so this is the completed cardboard mock-up. Uh, I decided to move the player one button closer to the joystick and you can see that the spacing isn't very good. In the final version, the spacing, it's still not perfect, but it ended up a lot better than here. I just wanted to show you the final mock-up real quick. Okay, so this is uh, my attempt to show you the full cardboard mock-up where I build the whole thing out of cardboard to make sure the sizes and make sure everything would fit. You can see down there I've got the uh, original control mock-up. I did the whole thing using this horrible red plastic ruler. Uh, I would definitely suggest you get a much better instrument than a grade schooler's ruler and if you have one available a t-square would be ideal you have no idea how many times I had to erase lines and keep trying because it wasn't square so obviously I have this sped up because it was a very long process and I don't show the whole thing but if you're not an experienced woodworker just like I'm not and excuse the uh, plumbers crack there if you're not experienced in woodworking just like me um, a cardboard mock-up is going to be absolutely necessary uh, really there's no better way to do it and you know I had no idea if my designs were gonna work I had this idea in my head and a couple rough sketches and just really didn't know if it was gonna work so moving on let's take a look at the final cardboard mock-up okay so here's the finished cardboard mock-up I didn't do the bottom the back or the top just because those you can usually cut to fit and uh, here my camera doesn't want to adjust its lighting 
but I've got it running um, Street Fighter 2. I've actually got the controls hooked up at this point. So there's you know the joystick, the player button, and the six control buttons. Uh, the no the letters that I have written on there are what keys they're emulating for the keyboard. That's how it's working. Is whenever one of those buttons is hit, the Raspberry Pi treats it as if a keyboard button is being hit. So I've got the joystick set to the directions up, down, left, right on the keyboard. The player button is set as enter, and then the ones you see taped on the buttons are the are the keys on the keyboard that they emulate. So you can see here that it's being held up by uh, masking tape and 3M dots. Uh, there you can pick up 3M dots at any kind of craft store. They, I think they're used for scrapbooking, but I thought they'd make it easier to put this together. Turns out they're they're too big for the edges of cardboard. But um, yeah, so you can see there, I just went back using the controls. And uh, let's see what else I do. So within the MAME software, you can set up what you can set up sh what are called shift keys, and uh, I just have mine set up so that uh, down and player one or down and enter is the uh, is insert coin up and enter is pause and left and enter is to go back to the game selection screen and uh, you can see in the back that I've got everything wired up and it's hooked up to a breadboard right now in this video just so that I don't have perm anything permanently soldered I might want to change things uh, all the buttons and all the switches share a common ground which I haven't run into a problem, but I have read in other places that there are sometimes problems. Luckily the Raspberry Pi provides multiple grounds, so you can have your joysticks on one, three of the buttons on another one, and three of the buttons on a third one. Or you can do what I did and they're all hooked to one. Um, the soldering was a real pain. Soldering everything on the, ti on the tiny pins with the automotive soldering iron that I have was it was nerve wracking. I didn't I didn't know if the Raspberry Pi could handle the heat and it did fine. So there's that. Here are some uh, simple still shots that I took after it was done. Unfortunately the wood shop that I did it in wouldn't let us record the actual cutting and building and all that. But if you've got a good hobby shop or a wood shop in your area, they should be very helpful. They actually ended up uh, they ended up telling me to go ahead and use MDF because I wanted to do hardwoods to make it look classy, and that that didn't work out uh, because well that would have been expensive. All in all, the wood costs were about forty-five dollars. If I had done it in hardwoods, the estimate for just my mess ups, like the bad cuts that I had to throw away, was about 80. So that's not the finished product, that's just the things I messed up. So anyway, I hope this all was helpful and uh, stay classy guys, over and out, watch your six.